I love passages that convict you, and so I want to let you know this morning that I am fully convicted by the passage I'm going to share with you. I am a fully flawed human being, and the message that uh, this passage brought to me is one that I need to hear every day and one that I hope that you will uh, that you'll come to appreciate. Uh, we are in Romans chapter 1, verses 9 through 12. Uh, don't get bogged down on the metaphor. This is an illustration. Most of this passage is an illustration for you to understand what it means to be fully present. So let me share this passage with you. When down and outers get a break, cheer. And when the arrogant rich are brought down to size, cheer. Prosperity is, a short-lived, is as short-lived as a wildflower, flower, so don't ever count on it. You know that as soon as the sun rises, pouring down its scorching heat, the flower withers, its petals wilt, and before you know it, that beautiful face is a barren stem. Well, that's a picture of the prosperous life. At the very moment everyone is looking on in admiration, it fades away to nothing. Anyone who meets a testing challenge head on and manages to stick it out is mighty fortunate. For such persons, loyally in love with God, the reward is life and more life. I love this passage because the writer uses a very powerful, prominent, and practical illustration. It was powerful then. It's powerful centuries later. He uses this idea of how we look at the wealthy How we look at the wealthy often causes us discontent. You know it. I know it. I wish what they had, I had. We're always looking somewhere else except for the place that we're supposed to live. And this passage is pretty clear to tell us that what really matters in life is one another. How do we focus on one another? How do we not be distracted? How do we live in the present here and now? And how do we do that effectively? The message is this, don't become distracted by your surroundings. For such persons, loyally in love with God, the reward is life and more life. Loving God, it's a bit nebulous. I love you, God. Maybe the message today is loyally love the God in others. Maybe that becomes meaningful to us. If I can find the God that lives in you, the God that lives in me, loving God becomes pretty real because you're in my life every single day. So maybe loving God in others, not being distracted, but being determined to do that. Now, I love Disney World. Where else can you be that people say, have a magical day all the time? You answer the phone, have a magical day. You walk into the park, they punch your ticket, have a magical day. I love Disney World. My wife and I were in Florida this December at a conference, and we had one afternoon that we could do anything we wanted to. You know where we're going, Disney World. Here's what was amazing to me at Disney World. I saw it time after time after time again. I saw parents pulling their kids or pushing their kids in strollers, not abnormal. But what was amazing was how many times these kids sitting in strollers at Disney World were staring at iPads. Are you kidding me? You are at Disney World. Mickey Mouse is right there. I just wanted to yank these kids up and say, look at where you are. You're so distracted by this tablet. I wanted to yank these parents up and shake them. Who puts a tablet in front of a four-year-old at Disney World? Another illustration to help you fully gather this idea of being present. This picture is going to come up is of two really bad football teams. <laughs> right? And it, it pains me. I'm, I'm a cowboy guy, so... You can boo that if you want to. Um, last regular season game, uh, AT&T Stadium, um, really, I guess, meant a lot for the Cowboys if Philadelphia would have lost, but, you know. Last regular season game. If you've ever been to AT&T Stadium in Arlington, it's in a magnificent place. It's, it's unbelievable. 
seats 100,000 people. And one of the most amazing things about AT&T Stadium are these huge television screens that, screens that Jerry Jones put in, 72 foot by 107 foot. 100, excuse me, 160 feet. They go from the 20-yard line to the 20-yard line. He has two of them on either side. He has big screens on either end of it. The screens alone cost $40 million. That's more than the first Texas stadium cost to build. Look a little bit closer at this picture. Are you kidding me? The play is happening right in front of you. How could you be so distracted? I'll tell you how you could be so distracted. It's really easy. I was there this past December with my son watching high school football games. I had to force myself to be present. I had to force myself to watch the live action, maybe watch the replay. Watch the live action. I want to encourage you this morning to force yourself to be present. Because being fully present forces us, it really forces us into some new realities. Reality number one is this, you will never love Jesus any more than you love the person right in front of you. Psychologists and sociologists tell us that when we take a glance at something, the first thing we recognize are those things familiar to us. And the unfamiliar that we see are defined by predetermined tendencies that we have. Do you see where I'm going with this? So very naturally, we see what we want to see. You say you love Jesus? Well, how are you handling this person that's right in front of you? You say you love Jesus? How about this person over here that you have nothing in common with? Can you find the Jesus in them to love? Reality number two, when the Jesus that lives in you discovers the Jesus that lives in someone else, amazing things happen. When I fully believe that I am the beloved of God and I fully believe that you are the beloved of God, it levels the playing field. Distractions go away. The ground at the foot of the cross is level. And when we fully understand how each one of us is His beloved, amazing things happen because I begin to not just love and forgive you, I begin to celebrate who you are, where you are, in the journey that you're walking in, in the shoes that you're wearing that I have no familiarity with at all. Am I taking the time to be present? Am I not being distracted by things I don't have that I wish I had? Am I being fully present? Reality number three. This is a new quote that I've just become familiar with, and it kicked me in the teeth. If you claim to be a servant, don't be surprised when people treat you that way. There's no prize for loving others. Not in the world we live in. But it's what we're called to do. We're called to be fully present in the lives of others in a way that says, I can respect you. I can love you. I'm going to find the Jesus or the God that is alive in you, and we're going to connect there. And we're going to walk the journey together because I'm going to choose to be fully present enough to do that with you. Jesus emptied himself. He became like a servant, and he became obedient, even to death on a cross. And so today, may you be fully present with those around you. May you not become distracted by those things that take you away from the Jesus that lives in others, and may you live and love better today than you ever have. I want to leave you with a quote this morning by Maya Angelou. You guys be kind to each other. Have a great day.